Controversial new rule that could restrict what books are allowed in South Carolina public schools is now in effect, and it was never fully vetted by the state's lawmakers tasked with doing exactly that because they didn't frankly expect it would actually go into effect just yet. State House reporter Mary Green unpacks this interesting story. Earlier this year, the State Board of Education signed off on this new regulation and sent it over here to the State House. The General Assembly then had 120 days to approve or deny the regulation, and that time ran out Tuesday. So now this new rule has automatically gone into effect without first getting lawmakers full vetting. We didn't vet it because we thought it wasn't going to go into effect. So it has surprised a lot of people, um, and, and I don't like that. Before the General Assembly wraps up its regular legislative session each May, it passes an agreement that, among other provisions, typically includes language concerning regulations like this one. Usually, it allows regulations that have yet to hit that 120-day mark to expire when the session ends to stop them from automatically going into effect. But somehow, that language got left out of this year's agreement, which lawmakers say they didn't realize until it was too late. I don't think there was anything nefarious. This regulation will matter. And the fact that it's, it's going to go into effect potentially without having been fully vetted, I think that's a problem. The regulation allows the State Board of Education to have the final say in local disputes over what materials are appropriate, ranging from school library books to even those read by an after school student book club. In a summary of the regulation, the South Carolina Department of Education says it was promulgated in response to the current patchwork of district policies to establish a clear, transparent, and uniform process that provides certainty for local educators, respects the legitimate prerogatives of parents, and protects students from materials that are not age or developmentally appropriate. Patrick Kelly of the Palmetto State Teachers Association says that's a worthwhile goal, but the definition of age appropriate in the regulation he says is too vague. Any description or depiction of sex in a book would make it age inappropriate for all grade levels under this regulation. The kinds of descriptions or depictions, Kelly notes, that can be found in the Bible and in classics like To Kill a Mockingbird and The Scarlet Letter. My fear is that these particular classic works will get caught by this unnecessarily wide net because the regulation didn't get refined as much as it should have. And under the new regulation, the state board sets a statewide policy with its rulings. So, for example, if it determines a book is inappropriate for students of all ages, that book is not allowed on shelves in any school in South Carolina, affecting all the state's students and teachers. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. Now, this regulation will be in place when the new school year begins in just a few months. Senate Republican leader Shane Massey says if there are issues with it, the General Assembly can fix them when the return for a new legislative session. But that won't be until January.